Just a reminder that the Archdiocesan Synod process is culminating at Pentecost 2022. It is time to take the next step with parish consultations or small groups. We have been asked to come together as a community and respond to and propose solutions for what will help inform and guide the next steps of this synod and our future. A synod that is listening to our voices. The small groups will begin the week of September 19th and conclude the week of October 24th. For more information, please visit our website Stay tuned for further announcements over the next few weeks. We look forward to seeing you at the Synod. Faith formation registration for the upcoming school year is now being accepted. Register online through our website, www.mystjoes.me. The early bird pricing ends on September 1st. Register now to get in on the savings. Applications for the peer ministry team at St. Joseph's are available in the parish office for the 2021-22 program year. Peer ministry is open to youth in 10th through 12th grades and will take a large role in the middle school programming. Peer ministers will be asked to commit to one planning meeting per month and to attend one or two faith formation sessions per month. Peer ministry is a great way to grow in your faith, develop leadership skills, and receive support as a member of the team. If you have any questions, contact Scott at the Faith Formation Office. Applications are due Friday, September 10th. There will be a new member gathering on Sunday, September 12th after the 8.30 Mass. Please see the bulletin for additional details. Archbishop Hebda has asked us to take up a second collection today for those suffering the devastating earthquake in Haiti. Haiti was also hit by Tropical Storm Grace. Please be generous to those who have suffered such devastation. The second collection will take place after communion. Every worthwhile gift, every genuine benefit comes from above says St. James in the second reading. But, he reminds us, true worship of God involves using those gifts to benefit the less fortunate. Good stewardship is not optional. It is the hallmark of our faith. At this time, I would like to invite you to please stand and greet those with whom you are worshiping. Please join us in singing our gathering song. It may be found at number 850. All are welcome.
Well, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let's open our hearts to God's grace and ask Him now to prepare us by forgiving our sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. giver of every good gift, put into our hearts that love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord.
is a greater good than life itself. My lips will glorify you. My soul is thirsty. My soul is A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans, and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. According to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. 
So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Back in my seminary days, I lived in a fishbowl, and everything I did was part of an evaluation, whether or not I'd be okay enough to make it through the seminary or whether I'd be tossed out. One of the great parts of the fishbowl was our prayer time. There was an expectation that every day I would spend, all of the seminarians would spend an hour in front of the Eucharist. We'd bring our spiritual reading with us. We would bring our rosaries with us. We'd bring whatever prayer books we felt were important to have. And there in the fishbowl, we'd observe each other as to how holy the other person was or wasn't. You know, it was never a matter of me sitting really and just talking to Jesus. I did that a little bit. But really, the guy sitting next to me who was reading Charlie Brown books just didn't impress me that much. And I kept wondering when he was going to get caught. You know, and others would be reading their philosophy books, getting ready for a philosophy test, just putting their time in. And, you know, I was waiting for them to get caught because they should. There's rules, you know, but we're here to pray. We're not here to be studying ahead of time. At least that was in my mind. And I suspect that those around me spent as much time evaluating my inadequacies, really wondering when it was I was going to get kicked out, you know, because I didn't pray with the same sense of devotion on my face. There were guys who looked like they were, had already entered into the seventh heaven, all in ecstasy. And then there was people like me who was bothered because I had something in my teeth and I spent most of my time trying to get it out, hoping to God I didn't get noticed as I'm putting my time in, thinking, you know, I, I, I got to put in an hour here. You know, and, and you know, that chair after about a half hour, I don't care how light you are, that chair starts getting to be a little hard. You know, but I got to put my time in. You know, and we also paid attention to the prayer book because we had begun using what we now call the breviary that the new translation had come out. So it was very important where you placed your ribbons because that told us whether or not you were praying appropriately or not. You know, if you didn't have your ribbons in the right place, then we knew that you weren't really praying, you were just messing around. It was stated amongst many of us that we hoped that when we died there'd be at least one person who would come in ahead of time to put our ribbons in the right place so nobody would really guess how little we really did pray. You know, just all these external signs living in the fishbowl, always evaluating whether or not somebody was good enough or not. And I suspect that must just be part of the issue of becoming 
a priest that you're going to have people evaluating you in all that you're doing. It wasn't just your grades. It wasn't just your attitude. It was even the way that you talked with God. That's all external observables. And we hear Moses today in that first reading telling the people, embrace these external things that God is giving you. He's given you a law. Don't change it. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Impress it upon your children. But it's from there that you will be evaluated amongst yourselves and also you will be evaluated amongst the nations around you. Many will look and see what you're doing and say, what nation has such a great God as this God who's given his laws? So the way that they lived became sort of an outward observable about how they were actually keeping the law. Problematically, in the history of Israel, they didn't keep the law very well. And over and over again, there's going to be prophets who begin saying, why do you keep turning to other gods? Why do you keep doing that which I've asked you not to do? You made a promise to me that you're not keeping. You've embraced false gods. Ultimately, it will lead to that Babylonian exile because they never remain faithful to the outward observables. Very few people could. Tell you what, in the seminary, very few people could live up to the outward observables. There were, there was, every year at the end of the year, as they did the evaluation, you know, you'd sit down with, Father Ken was one of the evaluators because he was the rector, and there were a couple other priests, you know, and, we get around to my prayer life and, you know, you could pray with a little bit more sincerity, they'd say. I didn't know what that meant. I still don't know, but boy, I really tried. I, I really got this look on my face, you know, of, of great, <sighs> yes, if only I could love Jesus more deeply, as if somehow the outward observable would kind of convince them somehow of what was going on internally. We hear James say something very different. We hear Jesus tell us something very different. James tells us, humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. We already hear from the prophets that God is going to remove our stony hearts and replace them with hearts of flesh. And he's going to write his law in our hearts and we don't need anybody to teach us because it'll be written in our hearts. Jesus tells us today, pretty much in the negative, you know, licentiousness and folly and evil thoughts and unchastity, theft and murder all come from the mind. Yeah, those are the negative side. But there's something else that comes, and that's coming from that which has been planted in you. God's spirit has been planted in you and in that spirit we begin to hear the words of love. The words that tell us to look beyond ourselves and to look at the others. James directs it. He says, yeah, you know, if you really are practicing true religion, you're going to care for the widows and the orphans. You're going to go beyond yourself because that's what true religion looks like. It's not a matter of somebody evaluating you. It's not an outward observance. It wouldn't be you sitting back saying, hey, guess what? I found an orphan kid over here. I put some new shoes on him. I deserve a gold star for that. James would kind of look at you and say, eh, you kind of missed the point. However, in the same measure, there's an orphan child who you help clothe without any word being said, but your heart's just moved to help this child, uh, James would say you're practicing that which has been written in your heart. You and I have had the word that has been planted in our hearts. It was planted the day we were baptized. It was nurtured the day we were confirmed. And every time we come to this table, that word is once again renewed. It's renewed not so that it can just be sitting in our hearts, but so that it brings an action within us, a positive action, not something to be evaluated in a fishbowl. He's a Christian because he prays, well, look at her. She's got her rosary. She's really a praying person. Those might all be true. 
But really, it's that simple thing, that simple greeting each other with respect and love. It's looking past yourself at a grocery store to see somebody else who might have only two grocery items and you've got a basket full and you say, go ahead. Something so simple as that and yet recognizing the other person and caring enough about them that you don't care about yourself. It comes from the heart. It's what's been written in the heart. You and I have had that seed planted and James tells us to humbly welcome it because that's what makes all the difference. It's not the outward observables. It's that which we respond to as our hearts meet love and live love. In that, all that matters is unfolding I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Brothers and sisters, we honor God with a heart that generates love. With love for all people, let us offer our prayers to God. For the church, for Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and lay ecclesial ministers, may they witness to a way of following Christ that is honest, authentic, and true. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders and those throughout the world, may they generate love with the policies they enact. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are threatened, hurting, struggling, and recovering from human-made and natural disasters. For the people of Haiti, for the families of Believe Guatemala, for the Afghani citizens and the U.S. troops in Afghanistan, and all who are fighting forest fires. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Wyatt, Vincent, and Dakota, baptized this weekend, may they and their family be surrounded in support by this parish community as they continue to grow in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have gone before us in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Creator, we know that our prayers reach to the heavens. Hear us now and strengthen us to choose only to follow you. And hear our prayers for our archdiocese as we pray. Loving God, who gave St. Joseph to Jesus and Mary as protector and guide, grant that our archdiocesan synod 
under his protection and guidance. May help us discern your direction for our church. May we listen as he listened, trust as he trusted, obey as he obeyed, receive as he received, love as he loved, and share in his life of devotion to Jesus and Mary. St. Joseph, Mary, Mother of the Church, Please join us in our song of offering, which can be found at number 590. Christ, be our light. At number 590. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, 
so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory. As with one voice we acclaim... of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. Share that peace with each other now. God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord. Please turn to number 909 and to join us in singing Jesus, Hope of the World.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that, being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is and to go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. And as we go forth, please join us in singing Lead Me, Lord. It can be found in the back of the Gather Book in the supplement at number 11. <laughs>